actually I've got something kind of special to show you. I've been working on this for a while now, and it is a three-reeled slot machine. There are four different blocks using the rotation. They are iron, gold, diamond, and emerald. They can be swapped out for anything, uh, as can the frequency that show up quite easily. And there are also eight different prizes. Four small prizes and four large prizes. If you get two blocks in a row, as you see here coming from the left, you'll win the small prize, which it's just an, or an iron ingot, a gold ingot, an emerald, or a diamond. But if you get all three in a row, you actually win the entire block of the item. As far as win percentages go, I recorded 50 spins of the machine and won 17 times, which gives 34%. 11 of those times were for the small prize and six were for the large prize, which you can see down in the bottom what I won. Now just to give you an example of how it spins. Now you might be wondering why the middle reel didn't spin at all. Each reel can spin individually between 0 and 31 times. This is accomplished using some binary randomizers, or pseudo randomizers, I don't think you can really get a true randomizer in this game, and decoders. And the first one toggles between 0 and 1 modes. Now just to spin it a few times, see if we win anything to show you how the prizes are dispensed. So close to winning the big prize. For a 1 in 3 chance of winning, I have awful luck. Whoops.
and I won an emerald. Now to show you how this actually works. Now just a warning, this turned out a bit bigger than I anticipated. It's not as complicated as it looks though. It's the by far the biggest part of this is the decoder. Now it all starts with these. These minecarts travel along different length paths. And once they both cross over this button, they will activate this toggle. Which this toggle then activates that pistol. Or would have if I didn't use it. Alright, so let's move over to this one. Now this piston basically acts as an if-else statement. If the piston is extended, then the redstone signal will go down through my binary decoder. Which all it does is just pulse along these eight different redstone strings. If the piston is retracted, it'll just pass through and it won't go through here. Which, as you can see, I have binary paths for 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Giving a possibility of up to 31 different moves. Now, once it reaches the end, or well before that, I should, say you should, or I should talk about this. After each pulse, the current travels up to a couple of places. The main place that we saw earlier was for the reel that it is tied to. In the case of the one we were just looking at, it is the first one, or the leftmost one. There's a timing of two pulses between each piston, which works perfectly with the setup that I have here. And the reason why it comes back so far is just so that I could stack these with a gap of only one space between them. Now the other place they go is over the prize wheels, which each of these are set up exactly the same as that, except the stone represents which material that I want to win for that one. The glass represents every, anything else. Which I'll come back to these in just a little bit. So once the currents reach all the way through the end, it will go all the way up here. Well, it'll also go a couple places. But I'll go up here first. And what this is is three RS NOR latches tied to an AND gate. And what this guy does is just deactivate the RS NOR latch once all three are active. And this will create just a short pulse of redstone signal. And this pulse will travel up and along to each of the prize wheels and will attempt to pass through the opaque blocks. Now obviously if it's glass the redstone won't transmit. But in the event that it's stone it will. Now if it passes through all three you'll win the grand prize. And because of the equal timing on both this repeater and coming through here, you won't win the small prize as well. But if you only pass through two and this one still shows up as negative, you will win the small prize. I'm just breaking everything today. Uh, regardless, if you win the small prize or the big prize, the current from there goes to pretty much the same place. which is the dispensers and an ore gate. The dispensers spit out the item that you've won, and the ore gate activates them. Which is what the you know, the logic of the track. Now, on to the second place that that current goes through once it reaches the end. You may have noticed these pistons earlier. What these do is extend or retract and lock in place what you want, or prevent the state from changing any further. Although in this case it's on, but that may be because I broke something on accident. Um, when the button is first pressed, 
it will flip this toggle right here, which will lock the state. Then once the current goes all the way through, it branches back up and comes back across and flips the toggle again, which draws these back in and lets the state change once the buttons are or once the detector rails are full pit. Now all this started, um, actually it kind of started as a joke about what the most complicated thing I could make was, but as a proof of concept and something that's much smaller and more practical, I made just an individual one reel slot machine. It has a winner every time, and this could be useful if you're doing something like a daily server prize or anything of sort. And I want a stone. For example, if you tied it to a light sensor, and instead of having it go to dispensers, you have to go to command blocks, it would be an interesting way to give everyone a random gift for the day. Or if you're feeling particularly evil, instead of having one of the winners go to a dispenser, you can have it go to, say, lava or have the floor fall out from under the people. Just whatever you feel like doing. Alright, and that is my three-reel slot machine. Thanks for watching.